Democratic Congressman Jason Crow of Colorado joins us now. Congressman Crow, thank you for your time. Good to be with you, Kyle. Congressman Crow, I see some Democrats celebrating the indictment of former President Donald Trump. Is that something to celebrate? No, it's not. Nobody should be celebrating and nobody should be vilifying uh, this. Uh, this is the process. This is what happens in America. Everyone's accountable to the law. If they break it, uh, then they have to answer for that. And we're going to see what happens. I don't know whether uh, Donald Trump broke the law or not. The indictment hasn't been unsealed. We haven't seen the indictment. Grand jury proceedings are closed. We have to see how this process plays out. It's true. None of us have seen this indictment. But from what has been reported, it's it's cobbled together with a fairly unprecedented kind of, of charge. The fact that this kind of case is being brought against a former president, does it run the risk of looking like prosecutors are trying to go after him on anything, even if they have to invent it? Well, you know, uh, above most courthouses is the statue of justice. And justice is holding the scales, and justice is actually blindfolded. And the reason that justice is blindfolded is because it shouldn't matter what your job is, what your gender is, where you live, what your title is. Uh, in America, you are subject to the law, whether you're a former president or, or anybody else for that matter. So the precedent that I'm worried about is actually the precedent that some people seem to be implying that if you are elected president, that you should be immune for life, for prosecution and be able to do anything you want to do. That's, that, that is just an untenable result. So let me ask you, when it comes to precedent, do you think that the reason that former American presidents have not been indicted is because they hadn't committed crimes? Or do you think it was because we kind of had this understanding that we don't go after former presidents for stuff like that unless it's a really big deal? Now, I don't know whether other presidents have committed crimes or not. That's debatable. Obviously, there's been a lot of bad conduct by presidents in, in the past uh, that may or may not have been a crime. And I can't speak as to whether or not those prosecutors decided not to bring those charges. I don't know. Uh, but what I do know is that here today, now, everybody should be subject to the law. Uh, and yes, we are at a very sensitive, very partisan time. And I, I take that extremely seriously. But just imagine what would happen if, if we would just say, you know, just to say this out loud, out loud, that if you're the president of the United States, you shouldn't be prosecuted for a crime. I don't think most people think that that's actually a tenable result in anything that we should accept in this country. Given the Given really the serious things that President Trump was accused of doing surrounding January 6th, the kind of conduct that some people said imperiled American democracy itself, does it feel awful small that what prosecutors have ended up with is going after him for covering up a, a payment to a porn star? Porn star? Well, the, whether it's a hush money payment for, to a porn star for infidelity, whether it's a violation of the Impoundment Control Act, which was the basis for the first impeachment trial that I prosecuted, and I firmly believe he violated that law, and that was a high crime uh, or misdemeanor that justified his removal because that also went to the core of our national security. And let's not forget that was about providing a lethal aid to Ukraine to put them in a position to resist a Russian invasion. That's what that impeachment was about. Whether it's about him telling the Secretary of State of Georgia to you know, find 10,000 votes that don't exist so he can win the election, uh, or whether it's tax fraud. I know there's been a lot of allegations, uh, some of which I firmly believe, like the Empowerment Control Act violation that he did commit. That's why I prosecuted that case. Uh, the other ones, we're going to have to see how it plays out. For all of the Republican protestations about the idea that prosecutions are now being politicized, of course, a, a foundational idea of the Trump era were, were threats to imprison his political opponents for this or that. It, it was literally a chant at his rallies. Do you think the fact that now that he is on the receiving end of an indictment makes it more likely that his allies somewhere else in America, some conservative prosecutor somewhere, is going to bring a spurious case against a Democrat? Well, it shouldn't. Uh, I don't know whether it makes it more likely or not. But listen, Donald Trump has a long history, a well-established history of inciting violence, of, ca uh, of actually calling for uh, physical violence against his opponents, calling for imprisonment against his opponents. This is a man who fundamentally doesn't agree with American democracy and our system of checks and balances. And his core supporters around him have enabled that, or in worst cases, actually have furthered that and perpetuated that violence uh, in that uh, lack of respect for rule of law. So he remains very dangerous. Uh, some of the core people around him remain very dangerous. And that's why we have to be vigilant. That's why Republicans and Democrats alike have to stand up 
and be very clear that we will not tolerate violence. We will not tolerate people inciting violence. We will not tolerate, tolerate weaponization of our criminal justice system or anything else. This is America, and we demand equal justice under the law and due process. And Donald Trump is entitled to that equal justice or equal protection and due process. One last big picture question for you, Congressman Crow. While former President Trump is the first former American president to be indicted, the idea of heads of state being indicted when they're out of office has happened in a number of different democracies, from Argentina to France to Israel to Portugal. So it's not unheard of when you look around the world. Is it perhaps a good thing if current and future presidents get put on notice that if they commit crimes, they could get indicted? Kyle, it is never a bad thing for elected officials in the United States of America to know that they are subject to the rule of law. Um, how could that possibly be a bad thing? Uh, you, if you are serving the public, uh, in fact, the standard should be higher for elected officials. If you are in the public trust and elected to discharge our national security, to vote and make our laws, you should be held at least to the, the, the same standard as everybody else. Uh, but I, I would even say you know, higher ethical and value standards in, in most cases as well. One last quick political question then. President Trump obviously is running again in 2024. And are you excited about supporting a Biden re-election campaign? I am. I think President Biden has done a phenomenal job. Uh, the last Congress was actually one of the most legislatively successful Congresses in American history. Not since the great society programs of Lyndon Johnson did we see you know, six major transformative packages of legislation pass in one Congress, it was, it was uh, really incredible. It's gonna make a big difference for folks' lives. And he, he's shown his steadiness, he's shown his leadership, uh, and I will absolutely support him if he runs. Congressman Jason Crow, thank you for your time. Appreciate it, talk to you again soon. Yeah, thanks Kyle.